Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we are going to be performing a fundamental stock analysis of AMC Entertainment Holdings Inc., ticker symbol AMC. AMC has been one of the most hyped stocks on Wall Street bets over the past couple of years. It had its huge run up in the spring of 2021 alongside GameStop and a couple of these other hype stocks. During that time, management issued a ton of shares to raise additional capital for the business. And at the end of August 2022, AMC also issued these preferred shares, what they call the AMC preferred shares or the APE shares, with the condition that management is going to be able to issue more of those into the future to also raise capital. So AMC's management has been capitalizing on their meme stock status. Currently, AMC is trading for $8.98 per share. Year to date, they are down 67%. Over the past year, they are down 81%. Over three years, they're down at a rate of about 6.6% compounded annually. We can see that from January of 2021, they were priced at a low of about $2 per share. And that went all the way to a high of $58 per share in June of 2021. And they've been downhill since then with these occasional spikes. Since the company was publicly listed nearly nine years ago, the business has seen its stock price fall in half, down about 7.6% each year. Currently, AMC is trading a dollar over their 52-week low, which is down nearly $39 from their 52-week high. They have a ton of short interest around the business, similar to what triggered the original Wall Street bet interest in the business back in 2021. Right now, 17.5% of their shares outstanding are currently sold short. They are a relatively small business. They have a $4.6 billion market cap, but they have a lot of debt. So they have a $14 billion total enterprise value. For some background about the business, AMC Entertainment Holdings Inc. is involved in the theatrical exhibition business. It owns, operates, or has interests in theaters located in the United States and Europe. It provides amenities such as plush power recliners, MacGuffins, full bars, AMC dine-in theaters, and premium presentation. The group operates in the United States markets and international markets, and it derives key revenues from the United States. The company was founded in 1920 and is headquartered in Leewood, Kansas. Even though it's a public business, it's a subsidiary of Dalian Wanda Group Co. Limited. Currently, AMC operates about 930 movie theaters worldwide and has nearly 10,000 screens. For our fundamental analysis today, we are going to be performing the Select 6 analysis, taking a checklist style approach to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of AMC based off of their business fundamentals. So this analysis is still evolving, it's still a work in progress, and it's an opportunity to learn in public. So with that said, let's get right into our analysis. Starting off with metric number one, we want their return on capital over the last five years to average 14% or higher. So the average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. And over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is going to return approximately what its underlying business returns. And these business returns are going to be captured here by return on capital. So prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, AMC was producing below average but positive returns on capital. Since 2020, they've had negative returns on capital, although these have been getting less negative as the years have gone on. In 2020, they had negative 18% return on capital. Last year, it was negative 9%. And currently, in the last 12 months, it's negative 4% returns on capital. So while these are negative, they have been increasing. It looks like the company's business is improving, although it's still in a very poor position. Averaged out over these five years, they're earning about negative 3.5% return on capital in a given year. So this is going to be an X to start off on our first metric here. Metric number two here, we're taking a high level overview of the cash coming into the business. We're looking for their revenues, net incomes, and free cash flows to have grown over the last five years. This metric is all or nothing in nature. Either all three of these are going to be up for a check, or if even one of them is down, this entire metric will be an X. AMC has seen their revenues shrink in half over the last five years. Their net incomes have decreased and they are three times as negative as they were in 2017. A similar situation occurred with the business's free cash flows. They've only had positive free cash flow in 2019 and from 2017 to 2021, their free cash flows have gone down nearly six times. This is a pretty horrendous picture here for AMC. This is another X here on metric number two. Metric number three is building off of the previous metric, but here we're looking at the business from the perspective of an individual shareholder in the company, looking at AMC on a per share basis. We want to see earnings per share growth over the last five years. AMC's financials are going to give us a little bit of a curveball here. 
While their earnings loss has increased in the last five years, they've diluted shareholders so much that they're actually spreading their losses over a larger share count base. And so counterintuitively to beginning expectations, AMC has actually increased their earnings per share, albeit they're still negative, but this is actually going to be a check on metric number three due to the fact that they've spread their losses over a larger base. So in the last five years, AMC has diluted existing shareholders by 372%. This is terrible to see as a long-term shareholder in the business because when you're purchasing a share of stock, what you're really buying is a fractional ownership percentage in that business. When a business dilutes existing shareholders, they're decreasing your ownership percentage in the business, which is ultimately going to decrease your ownership percentage of that business's profit. So that's what we're seeing here. Although because they've diluted shareholders here, their negative losses, again, are spread over a larger base. So again, this is actually going to be a check, even though these are terrible signs here on metric number three. Metric number four is going to be similar. We're looking for free cash flow per share growth over the last five years. AMC has doubled the amount of cash flow that they're consuming in their business over this time. Because their free cash flows went negative at a rate that was faster than their earnings, we're actually still seeing a free cash flow per share loss here, even though we saw an earnings per share growth over the same time frame. So metric number four is going to be an X. One thing to note is that over extended periods of time, both a company's earnings and free cash flows should be about the same. If there are wild discrepancies here, that could be potentially a sign of either aggressive accounting or potentially even fraud. So again, that's just something to take note of, and you can research that independently. So to recap where we are so far through four metrics, we've only got one check and we've got three X's. Metric number five, here we want their net debt, which is long and short-term liabilities minus cash and short-term investments to be below the amount of free cash flow that they've generated in the past five years. At the end of last year, AMC had $9.2 billion of net debt. Currently, they have $9.5 billion of net debt. And in the last five years, they've had negative free cash flows. They've had to consume about $2 billion of cash in their business. This is not a good sign to see here, given the company's leverage. They are not able to produce free cash flows, which means that in order to keep paying off these debts and keep operating their business, they're either going to have to raise additional debt, raise capital by diluting shareholders farther, or sell off assets. And because of the precarious financial positioning the business is in, those are more likely to come at unfavorable terms. So frankly, we don't want to be investing in overly levered businesses because in economic downturns, they're the businesses that are most likely to do the worst. AMC looks highly levered based on their abilities to produce free cash flows here. This is another X on metric number five. Finally, the big metric of them all, metric number six, we want their average free cash flow to total enterprise value yield to be above 5%. If this is the case, this gives us a risk premium to the risk free rate of the 10 year treasury. We're using the business's total enterprise here rather than the business's market cap because total enterprise value is gonna give us a more realistic economic picture of the business as if it were a private business by accounting for both the business's market cap and their net debt position. So AMC currently has a total enterprise value of $14 billion. We learned that in the last five years, they produced negative $2 billion of free cash flow. And even their last 12 months of free cash flows have been about negative. So they are consuming a lot of cash to keep their business operational. They are not throwing off cash from their business. And so this is going to be an X on metric number six. Because the business is not cash flow generative, it's not even able to give us a free cash flow yield. So AMC looks to be in pretty rough shape here. Sometimes it makes sense that a business, even without producing positive cash flows, is still going to have a relatively high stock price. And that mostly is going to depend on the business's assets. It's going to depend on the value of their book value and their tangible book value. In the case of AMC, they have both negative book and negative tangible book values. So the company's assets are not even enough to pay off all of their debts right now. Really, some of the company's financing moves, like issuing these Ape class shares, are really a Hail Mary to try to raise capital for this business. These are troubling signs for shareholders of AMC. So in summary, AMC only checks the box on one out of our six metrics. That's more or less on a technicality. The business is producing negative returns on capital. They don't have positive free cash flows. Over the last five years, they don't have positive free cash flows. They've seen their revenues shrink in half, their earnings are way negative, as are their free cash flows, and they've diluted existing shareholders by 372% over the last five years alone. In addition to that, the company has nearly $10 billion of debt, and the company's book value is quite negative. 
when it comes down to it, AMC looks like a meme stock through and through. <laughs> However, this type of analysis is a holistic and beginning starting point to help you determine whether it's worth your time to go in and learn more about a business. It is not financial advice and it is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Before making any investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered financial and legal professionals and do your own homework to learn more about the business. One of the best ways you can learn about any company is to dive into the company's filings, read through their 10Ks to get a history and a better sense of the business overall. A company's 10K will outline the business's risks. It will talk about potential opportunities and challenges that the business currently faces, and it'll help you familiarize yourself with the management of the company. After you're done reading through those 10Ks, I would recommend reading through the company's quarterly earnings call transcripts to come to a better understanding of the company on a quarter to quarter basis and how it's performing in more or less real time. You'll also be able to come to an understanding of both the competence and the integrity of management. So as a value investor, you want to come to understand the business as if you owned 100% of it, and you can understand the essence of the business and know all of its ins and outs. So again, despite the warning signs we may see here on AMC, this is not financial advice and it's not a buy or a sell recommendation. With that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of AMC Entertainment Holdings, Inc., ticker symbol AMC. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about AMC with me, and have a great day.